All right, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how I created this ping pong paddle from start to finish using the Substance 3D tools. So here we are inside a Substance Painter. This is ultimately what we're gonna be building towards. We're gonna to be learning some different techniques, uh, going over some specifics, but I'm not gonna to get too deep divey into the details. If you'd like to know more about Substance Painter, Substance Stager, you can find the link in the YouTube video down below. And that's gonna have access to my entire free Substance Painter course and Substance Stager course down there as well. But first things first, let's talk about where this ping pong paddle came from. It actually became, it came over from the Substance 3D Asset Library. This is a, a fantastic resource with tons of models, materials, light rigs, that kind of thing. And I found this ping pong paddle and I'm actually gonna be using some of the materials from the Asset Library here. So if you see me using anything in, the, in Substance Painter, that is not there by default. If you're not seeing it in your little asset window, it's because I got it from the asset library. All right, so let's go ahead and break down what the model is. I'm gonna go ahead and take off all the work I did and we're gonna recreate it. So we've got four different components. We've got the blade, we've got the handle, we've got the sponge and the surface. So great news for you all watching this. If at any point, if you don't get anything else out of this video, I think you're gonna learn a little something about uh, the anatomy of a ping pong paddle. So that's that's gonna be great for everybody. So, um, so first off, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I did find some reference. So here's some reference images that I'm gonna be working with. Uh, these are like the ping pong paddles my brother and I played in our basement in, the, in Columbus, Ohio growing up. So I have some nostalgia for these. I can still kind of feel them, smell them, that kind of thing. So this is generally the kind of stuff that I'm gonna be looking at creating. So for this paddle, I want to, I always remember them having two surfaces, one that was kind of flat and, and almost like rubber and the other side of them, it had a bump grid texture to it. So for both sides, I'm just going to add this, one of my favorite um, substance materials, this is rubber vulcanized raw. So I'll just drag and drop that onto the scene. And you can see the reason why I love it so much is it looks like when you're looking at it, like straight on, it looks like nice and matte. But as soon as you get like a little glancy angle at it, you can see those little rubber elements picking up. The size of the texture is a little bit big, so I'm just gonna tile that down just a touch. I could also go and just make it for physical sizing. Actually, that, that looks pretty good. I'll stick with that. Because uh, that'll read the model size and the texture size and, and match those up together. So now that I've got the base material down there, what I wanna do is I wanna add, again, that red color to one side over the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer here. I'm going to give it the red color that I'm looking for. And we'll just keep it about that color and I just want to assign it to one side. So in this particular case, I'm actually going to use our geometry map, which is this little box here to the side, uh, because these are separate pieces of geometry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unselect one side and keep it up on the other side. So we'll go ahead and call this the uh, red color. Um, from there, it's about getting those bumps in there, those, those, those like grid-like patterns. So for that, we've got a polka dot material this plastic polka dot recessed again from the asset library you can just drag and drop that on here again the color is going to update we don't really want that and it's also replacing the vulcanized rubber so i'm going to do two things i'm going to slide it underneath the red color to get the red color and i'm going to take off the um the metalness and everything else because i really i'm really just looking for the normals to kind of bump out there so we're going to go ahead and import all of the uh, other materials from the vulcanizer. Actually, let me slide this down below because there might be more to it. Okay, cool. So inside the parameters of this, I can increase the tiling. Um, that's it's, it's capped at 128. I can't go further than that. But what I can do is go to the tiling down here and just increase the tiling. That's still too much, so we'll go down to two. Um, and now I've got inside, and oh, I forgot to isolate it. So I'll just do the same geometry mask here so it's not on this side. Awesome, take it off there, back on. Okay, away we go. Now what I want to do is I want to paint away some of these dots so that I can actually go in and add a little bit of a logo down here at the bottom. To do that, all I have to do is make a black, or you know, I'll make a white mask for these because the majority of them are going to, to be there and then I'm just going to paint like a black strip along the bottom. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add a paint filter underneath that. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a hard brush because I don't want, I don't want these soft edges. So we'll basic hard, go ahead and size it down. And then all I'm going to do is just select here and then shift select across. Okay, I almost got them all. No, I'm dead. Yeah, I think I'm pissed. Yeah, we'll just 
go all the way across here. Okay. Uh, there we go. All right, cool. So now I've got that. I've got that layered down there. And I also want to just create a little bit of a, almost like a, I don't even know what to call it, like a little trapezoid type shape here in the middle. And for that, I'm going to activate my symmetry because I, I want that I want it to be like perfectly symmetric and I don't want it to count a bunch of dots. So basically, I'm just going to go in here to about a dot size, grab this one, go up to about here, and then cut over. And you can see it's doing it equally on both sides. Um, go ahead and just take those. Actually, let me turn off symmetry because that's not quite going right down the middle. There we go. All right, cool. So now I can increase this and just wipe those away. All right, great. So how am I going to get my logo on here? Um, oh, and actually, I see this. I want to get that one in. I just want to make sure I got all this. Okay, cool. So I want to get my material, my logo right in there. Um, in order to do that, I can um, just drag and drop the material on there. And for this one, I'm going to use a logo I found on Adobe Stock. It's just this kind of generic hippo one that I that I just like. I just think it's kind of fun. So what I'm going to do is just drag and drop this onto the, the paddle here. I actually want to have it be a mask. Um, by default, it's just kind of a grayish white color. So I'm just going to line it up right here, right where I want it. And the thing is, is I, I don't want it to be this. I actually want it to, to be, uh, to, to evaluate the height. So I'm just going to rename it, go down here. I, I'm going to take off color, metal, roughness, normal. And I just want to push the height down into it a little bit. I can kind of push it up. Let's go down. Let's go down into it. And then anytime that I'm using a black and white image, like a, an alpha to push height on something, I always want to add just a little bit of blur because what ends up happening is that you will eventually, sorry, we thanks something in that key there. Um, what ends up happening is it's, it creates a little bit of an aliased edge to it. So I just create a filter, find my blur. Here we go. And then just take down the value to like a 10, one. Um, you can see that, that that just adds a little bit, like a little bit of that softening edge so you don't get an anti-alias around the edge there. Um, and that's, that's feeling about right to me. All right, cool. So I've got the surface, the main paddle um, surface done. Now I kind of want to move on to the rest of it. So for that, I want to make a wood material for the, uh, for the, both handles here. And for that, I'm just going to drag and drop it off to one. And for the handle, it's great, but I want to add it to this area as well. The, uh, is it the sponge? I guess it's the sponge, yes. So I'm going to instantiate that across texture sets, tear it off for the blade, turn it off for the surface, and just have it check for the sponge. And now they're connected. So when I increase, like when I make this one a little bit lighter in color, you can see both of them come along with it. So I'll just, a little bit less saturated. Yeah, a little bit right in that color. I also am not crazy about which way the wood uh, grain is going, so I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. So we got the wood handle. Awesome. Amazing. For this blade on the side, I actually want to add that vulcanized rubber on there too. So I'm going to go, uh, just, to, just to keep it clean, I'm going to go back into the surface, right-click vulcanized rubber, and instantiate that across to the blade as well. Boop. All right, cool. Now, handle. One of the things I liked in the reference was there was one with like a kind of off-center vertical red line. So I kind of want to, um, I want to include that as well. So for that, I'm just, I'm just going to make a new layer, um, grab that same red color that I used on the, the paddle itself. And I just want it to be a stripe. Now I could go in and paint it, or there's a, there's a million different ways I could do it. But for me, I like projecting it in 3D space. So I'm going to change my projection type from triplanar or from UVs to triplanar and then change the crop to crop the shape to just this box. Now all I have to do is scale this down to the size that I want. And you can see that now I can just kind of position it. And whether or not I can, I can, like, I kind of want it on both sides. But if I didn't, I could also just make this box smaller like this way. And then just have it only be around this side and not that side. So it kind of is down the middle. But for this, I'm, I, I want it to be on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it on over here. Now the logo, I just want to be on on one of the sides. So uh, I'm just going to pop it on this side. Basically do the same thing I did in the previous for the the surface itself. Just go to the logo. 
and drop this right on here. Uh, again, use it as a mask. We're gonna rotate it. Just kind of position it right on there. By the way, this this little tool is great if you want like to, this little arrow with the circle on as a surface tool, this will pin it to the surface and allow you to move it wherever you want. So that's, that's a really handy one as well. So I'm just gonna keep it up there. Great. Um, same thing, rename it Hippo logo. Give it the color that I want. And I think, I think I just wanna keep, actually both of these, I wanna just keep as the color because I wanna still read that. Um, wanna still make sure I'm reading the wood texture through that. All right, cool. Now, uh, this is pretty much done. The only other thing that I really wanna do is I wanna put the Hippo logo along the blade here as well. So just one last little bit, can never, uh, can never have too much uh, logo work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, create it as a new layer. And I'll show you why I do this in just a second. It's basically so I can get it to repeat uh, more easily. So I'm just gonna add a black mask, add a fill to the mask and then drop it into the fill. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and just position it in 2D space by rotating around and then scaling it down and continuing the scale. And just kind of making sure that it's lining up well. Yeah, just go ahead and scale it down just a little bit. All right. All right, cool. And so again, same way, it feels a little bit off-centered. Let me see, yeah, let me slide it. Get in there a little closer. Okay, and again, like, I kind of like it just being this off-white. If I wanted to, I could, you know, make it a different color. I could uh, ignore the color and just make it, like, a little bit metallic with, you know, actually, actually, that looks kind of cool. I'll keep it like that. All right, cool. Great. So we got our ping pong paddle the way that we want it. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Feeling like it's ready to go. Used a couple different techniques. Awesome. Now I want to render this out. So to render it out, I can obviously, you know, do the old painter thing where I can export it um, to any, pretty much any renderer that I want or any software that I want. We've got this great new file type export. We can export as an SVSAR and that can get read into almost any 3D software. But for me, I'm going to go file, send to, send to stager. This will open it up in stager and, and allow me to do my thing. Um, again, as it's loading, reminder, if you need to know more about painter or stager, Check out the links down below. I've got a full full courses that go over all these features and and everything everything within them. So inside of Stager here, the uh, our ping pong paddle is going to drop right in the middle, and we are going to be able to start uh, working with it. There she is. And for the scene, I just created a very simple, um, you know, plane on the ground, and I think I just did one plane back behind it. Sometimes I make a little. Um, three wall, you know, like a two wall boxy thing. But I think, I think for this one, I just did this. Um, all right. And then I, uh, create a camera and then have the point of the camera. I, I, you know, you can set your aspect ratio, something like this. You can do a square if you want. I'm going to turn on a ray tracer. And then for the lighting, so I, you know, you obviously can rotate the lights around. Um, but for this one, I wanted to... Uh, create like a little bit of like a ethereal plane kind of thing. So I went into the shader of the floor and I just added a little bit of emission. And since the ground was duplicated from the, or the, back, the back wall was duplicated from the ground, they'll both start to glow up. I, I generally like doing this when it's just, um, uh, when it's just like a simple prop, it kind of, kind of helps me highlight it a little bit. It's a little bit flat lighting, but, but that's okay. Um, and then for this, I will do, uh, animation. And I'll grab the ping pong table, do a ping pong paddle, do animation, activate spin. And then I think for this one, I ended up doing like six seconds for the spin. And you could add some controls over the type of rotation that it does, but I just kept it pretty standard. And now I'm going to turn off ray tracing just so we can see the full spin here. Yep, there we go. And once you have this set up and ready to go, just click render. You render out the entire duration. You can uh, render out, I, I just did PNGs for my file format. Um, and you can take that image sequence into Premiere, render it out, do whatever you need to do, and finish with this this final product. So 
Again, super quick, super easy way to showcase some of the work that you did in Painter um, by creating these turntables in Stager. And yeah, so if you have any questions, throw them in the comments down below and I will be happy to address them in a future video. All right, have fun everyone.